Only been working on collaborative projects. <coughs> That's why we're doing it. Quick run through, because I got criticised last time for not saying who the presenters were. So, first of all, we've got Steve here, who's going to get us in a minute to tell us about, um, he's the founder of Mnemonics Limited. He's going to tell us about that big book over there. That's my description, not yours, Steve. Good, good. Yeah, somewhere else, wouldn't we? We've got uh, Simon Turner, who's um, uh, uh, gracefully has come in and stepped in and willing to do a, a presentation for us people who couldn't attend uh, through bad health. Um, but he's going to tell us about his uh, intelligent eating control systems that uh, they launched in Germany in November last year, have you? Yeah. Go to market. Um, hopefully, Dr. James Bruce is here, Dr. Uh, Dr. James? No, not yet. Hopefully, Dr. James Bruce is going to come here and talk quite in some quite technical uh, areas, talking about uh, sensitive data and mining it, um, using a thing called edge mining that his research is working on at Coventry University. And then I'm doing a quick presentation at the end, but might be longer extension than Phil. Um, about, uh, on behalf of the Housing Association leader called Ruben Housie, I saw him do this presentation in November uh, at an IAC event in London, I thought it was quite interesting, because he set some challenges, real world challenges within his business, which he's hoping that the internet can, and technology might help him. So I'm throwing those to us in this room to see whether anybody here feels they can meet those challenges. He's willing to fund, or at least part fund, some of those ideas to innovate, which is why I've There you are again, if you're on Twitter, get those thrown up. Um, that's the end of my intro slides. I'm going to hand over to Steve next. Um, he's going to do his own introduction, I hope. Um, I hope so. <laughs> you can either shout or you can use that microphone. Yep. You have to hold it quite close, though, Steve. Yep. And, and it's just that big. Right. Okay, over to Steve. Can you uh, all hear me at the back? Good. Um, well, my name's Steve Priestnell. Um, I'm the founder of Movonix. And uh, tonight I'm going to talk to you about bringing an internet enabled device to market. Um, if you could save the questions till the end, um, I do tend to waffle, so we'll probably be here all night if uh, we start taking uh, questions from the floor. So, a bit of a story, how I got from a broken chair to move a ball. So I'm a bit of a gamer, I work from home most of the week, and uh, it's not all about watching Jeremy Kyle and sitting in your pants all day, have a little bit of me time at the end of, uh, of the afternoon. And a few years ago, um, I used to have the sort of Xbox behind me on a, a sort of presentation, um, which we used to go onto the wall. And uh, at the end of a long, hard day, I used to turn around, start playing either Halo or um, Gears of War. Anyone, one afternoon, um, I don't know if I'd had too many pies, but I leant back on my chair, my chair broke. So, rummaged around in the house. The only thing I could find was an old gym ball that was sort of under the stairs, so I took that back upstairs. Anyway, got to the end of the, the day, and uh, basically switched my Xbox on, sat down, started playing the game. And uh, straight away I noticed that I started getting very involved with the game, um, sort of finding that I was sort of moving around, I was even working up a, a, a bit of a sweat. And, and this sort of idea sort of came through to my, my mind that, hold on a minute, with all this problem about kids with obesity, kids catch potatoes, all they're building up is muscles in their fingers, um, surely, if even if we could just maybe interact with, with the game via, via the gym ball, maybe using the X, Y axis to, you know, forwards, backwards and to the side, there must be something here. So that led me on a bit of a path. Um, but again, another admission, I'm, I'm uh, I suppose, a closet entrepreneur. I've, I've been coming up with ideas for ever since, well, the stamp collecting club at school, in second year school, I used to subsidise my tuck money with extra, you know, selling stamps to the kids. Um, I've run scanners, um, scanner rental businesses, nursing websites with my brother. Um, there's been lots of different things I've tried. But what I've found over the years is the idea is the easy bit. The idea is the sort of tip of the iceberg. What you need to do is take that idea and, and create a USP from it. You know, has somebody already done that before? Is somebody already out doing that? You know, you can do some research on the web and quite quickly you can find that there's al already something there. The other thing is resources. Have you actually got the resources to deliver that idea? Um, we were looking at the um, applications for the Millionaire Start Fund. I don't know if anybody applied for that or looked at that in London. There was a big fanfare about it in the summer and basically there was a million pounds up for grabs. And I looked through some of those applications, I even put an application in myself. 
Um, one of the guys there had come up with an idea of sticking a turbine at the bottom of a trench in the North Sea using the um, uh, pressure differential to drive the turbine, to drive electricity, which then power the grid. Lo and behold, it's green energy. Now, that's a fantastic idea, but how are you really going to be able to get the resources? Have you got the resources at your fingertips to deliver that idea? So that, that would be my three things that, that I've taken over the last few years. That then feeds into a product strategy. How are you going to get your product to market? Are you going to license it? Are you going to use somebody else? Are you going to deliver it yourself? Are you going to use e-commerce? So you've just got to start thinking all about that. Have you got a business plan? Can you break that business plan down into project deliverables? Um, IP protection, that, that's a key thing. If you want to get investment, you're going to need to get IP. Um, and, and can you patent that project, uh, that product? Because that will go through a number of, of routes. That's not to say that you couldn't have a strategy to get to market very quickly, get ahead of the competition. You build up that momentum and they can't catch up. But for certain products, that might work. But for a lot of the products, particularly if you're going to have to get resources and other people spending money and investing in you, you're going to have to protect yourself through IP. Again, the idea is great. You've got it in your head. You get it down onto paper. But can you actually create a design? Can you actually take that idea and, and make it into a prototype? And, and that was something that I had a lot of trouble with. I ended up starting off with a wok attached to basically uh, an industrial joystick connected to a laptop. Fantastic for the first half an hour, and then it broke. Then I tried something else using a tracker ball from um, an old sort of Atari game, drilling a hole in the top, tried that again, that broke. And that was the sort of routine that I have to go on. So, it's not just about coming up with the idea, you've got to create it. And eventually I got something that I could actually hold my ha ha you know, put my hands on and actually feel and touch. So can you actually de de design something, build it and show it? Because then once you're able to do that, you can actually go into um, a proof of market. So again, are there people out there who are going to be interested in your product who could see the value? Can you position it in a certain way that you get the interest? And also, is there a viable business model? You might have a fantastic pro uh, product, but if it costs you £500 to deliver and the next best thing is £100, you've almost got to get five times the benefit from that product. The best, better way of doing it is innovate, find a product that is twice as good as the £100 product and sell it for £50. That's the sort of thing you need to try and get into your thinking, your feeling, what, you know, what are you going to do to deliver this product. The other thing I found out, and other people might find it different, but I haven't found it's a linear process. It's not a start at one end and you get to the other. It's a bit more like sort of brownie emotion. What you're doing is you're moving around. You, you'll have naysayers. I've had a lot of people who said, well, it won't work for these reasons or those reasons. But a lot of the time I found that actually opinions, and I could, I could prove that those opinions were wrong. So again, that's the sort of thing that you need to, need to focus on. So if you look at the whole structure of the, of the iceberg, these are the sort of things since 2009 I've, I've been getting involved in. I didn't know anything about manufacturing when I started. I didn't know anything about developing a proof of market um, proposal or, or going for funding. Um, I didn't know anything about using aluminium or, or plastics, the different versions, the different types, different costs. All of these things, they, they, they start falling into place though. Once you've got that sort of strategy and you, you know you've got some things, for some reason those things sort of um, fall into place. One thing I would say is the, the TSB Smart Fund was probably the, the thing that gave me a leg up. Um, if you want to look into the TSB Smart Fund, um, the first thing is a proof of market, the second thing is a proof of concept, and then there's a development and a prototype. We were able to get the um, uh, proof of market. Um, it's non-equity based, it's basically free money. The thing you have to do though, and again I'd warn people around thinking, oh, they're going to invest as, almost in, as you as a business, what they're actually looking after is a, a defined project with defined deliverables over a certain time frame, and that's what you need to put into your application. And, I, and, and I'll be honest, I got caught out before Christmas going for the next round of funding because I treated it like a business investment rather than a project investment. So, so just be very, very careful there. So, get onto movable. What, what is movable? Well, basically, it's an application driven device. It's internet enabled, so I've called it AD. Um, but I think that's the next generation, the Internet of Things, is about applications that are running things that are connected. Big data is obviously coming along. If you can get that data out of something and store it somewhere and report against it, analyze it, obviously then 
you can make decisions, you can make changes to things that have gone in the past, you can create things to happen in the future. So again, that, that's key. What we use inside, and the patent covers this, is the accelerometers and gyroscopes sit in the base of, of the device. So again, we can start connecting, we can use that motion, we can, we can analyse that motion, we can use that motion for, for, for developing applications and, and games. But if we, if we stick with applications... So the applications then drive the desired behaviour. So that might be a game that you want to create, a fitness game. Um, you may want to look at uh, creating applications that drive traditional treatments, for example, in healthcare. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. So again, the applications are key to interact with the device to drive the behaviour that you want. So what have we got? We've basically got the device, which is movable. It's agnostic across all, all the different devices, so we're not just tied to a gaming console or a PC or a laptop. We can, we can run um, the device across all these different applications, the, sorry, these um, device sets. Then what we can do is we can take that data that we capture from the application, from the device, and we can store that into the cloud. We can upload cloud, um, applications either through web services or download applications. So again, we're capturing the data that we need to make decisions in the future to improve or, uh, games, improve applications, improve treatments. And the other thing of, of in terms of putting it into the cloud, we can expand and, and flex as, as we need to. So again, we haven't got to put a big investment in, in, in hardware and technology up front. So what does this actually create in terms of, of what we've done? Uh, in terms of the platform, in terms of the applications, in terms of the device. Well, what we can start off is research and development. We can develop, develop the applications, the devices. You know, at the moment, we're using a, a single uh, gyroscope or a, a single accelerometer. There's nothing to stop us putting three gyroscopes in there or three accelerometers. The sensitivity that we'd be able to do if we did that it, you know, is down to, to millimetres, if, if not below. So again, there's certain things that we can put into the device. Now we have the device, which will improve it. We can then capture all of that data, again, put that back into the mix, put that back into uh, a, a data store. Um, we can then report and analyse that. That then drives a feedback loop. That, then we can make assessments on the feedback. We can make recommendations. We can make changes. And then that goes back into research and development. So again, what we're doing is, is improving the cycle as we go along, improving the applications, improving the device. So as a strategy, we have three defined channels. Um, app ball is for gaming, trim ball is for fitness, and um, fire ball is for, for healthcare. And I'm going to talk a little bit about um, a healthcare application, which we've identified. It's not, it's not written yet, um, but it came out of the proof of market funding we did. We basically sent a questionnaire out to around 100 physios. And what we did, we, we, take, we took all of that information, and then we started to identify where there are problems. And this is one of the problems that we, we identified. There's 5 million days lost every year through bad backs, lower back pain, they call it LBP. So not only have you got 5 million days lost to industry, so no tax receipts, there's, the, there's obviously no benefit there. What's also happening on the other side is the NHS has to spend £1.1 billion pounds sorting out back pain. I think £500 million pounds is lost to, through private healthcare trying to sort out these problems. So again, what you've got is you've got, got a loss in the economy, and you've got a loss on the NHS. So if we can look at even 2%, 3%, 5%, 10% improvements, that can turn out to very big big numbers. So that, that was the, the sort of problem. There's, there's a cost there to industry. So what we're then doing is we're looking at, okay, well, what are the treatments? Well, physical activity, maybe if you've got a bad back, is that really suitable for you? S staying active and, and physiotherapy. So theory, physiotherapy basically has some standard treatments. Those standard treatments, using a gym ball as well. So it's not that we're recreating the wheel. It's something that's been out there since the 1960s using to treat bad backs. There's two, two, two exercises. One is a pelvic tilt, which is basically backwards and forwards. One is the spine extension. I call it a superman or supergirl, where you're literally stretching out and just doing little movements. So the problem with this approach, though, and this is where the Internet of Things comes and this data feedback, it's, it's very subjective. You know, you could have the same treatment run by the same physio for a patient up in Scotland as you do in Birmingham, and you could probably get completely different results. So 
that's one problem. You've also got the expense of it's a one-to-many relationship, sorry, a one-to-one -one relationship. So what we've got is I've got a physio, I have half an hour treatment for my bad back. Well, even if they're working eight hours a day, that's 16 people a day. Is there an approach there we could take where it's a one to 20 or 30 people doing remote telehealth? Maybe that's, that's an approach we can take. We, we don't know yet. So there's also the, the, um, the process you have to go through is the, the exercises you have to go through. They are exercises that could be difficult for some people. Do they actually need supervision? So is there any way we can capture that movement, we can capture that control and deliver against it? So what we could do with an application design, this is straight from the beginning, is we replicate the pelvic tilt and the Supergirl, Superman. We put an application together so we can actually start analysing and assessing what, what they, are, they are doing during the exercise. So again, we, all we're doing is putting data and getting data out of an exercise that already have been done. But then what we can do is we can start designing applications which may, may vary that, um, that treatment programme. So it may be that we have a gradual increase in, 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 in movement. It may be that we have a clock face where it's different angles at different times. It may be that there's a number eight that they have to follow. But again, what we can start doing is say, is this actually working? Is this improving their, uh, their, their back problem? Is this, is this making a benefit? Or is it not? We can actually prove that it's not working. So again, we can start pulling... Um, the information out to make the right decisions to improve the treatment and care. So with all of the data we can capture, we can start looking at individualised treatments. So again, we might know that there's different applications work for 18 to 25 year olds than from 50 to 60 year olds, for different weight, for different levels of pit fitness, for different types of, um, for different types of back problems. And all, all in all of this information, all of this goes into a cloud-based sort of big data um, capture point. So we could share that data uh, with um, other partners, with uh, insurance companies, with private healthcare providers, with the NHS, with doctors, anybody who wants to be involved in this. So again, and what we're doing is we're learning as, as, we, as we build up this historic data pool, we can report against it, we can analyse it, or we can keep, keep it going. So it's a key thing and it's a key part of the solution that we're not just talking about an application stuck in a, a, a device. This is going to have you know, very interesting results that, that people in healthcare professions will be able to use and, 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 and deliver better treatment. So in summary, is it a viable idea? Well, yes. Has it got a USP? Well, yes. All it is really is a gym ball, connected to a cradle, connected to the internet. Have we got the resources? We see behind us there, we've already provided the resources. We've been able to take this to market. We now know <coughs> how we can deliver it. It's paint protected. We've proved its work. We can manufacture it in the Midlands for less than £15 in terms of the device. So again, that to me, is that's key. I'm, prou I'm a proud Brummie. There's so much, and I've, I found the last sort of 6, 12 months, there is so much knowledge in, in terms of manufacturing, in terms of getting products to market. You know, two of the factories that I went around to see, one plastics, one aluminium, they're, they're bringing work back in from China, from back in from Brazil. So I see this as an opportunity now to, to sort of make the Midlands, put the Midlands back on the map, and, and that's what we, ne we need to do. So thank you for your time. Hopefully you found that interesting. Um, I could take some questions if anybody wants a question. So at the moment, the device is through a phone, but we're also um, we're looking at using smart TVs. So again, the, the prototype and the proof of concept that we've developed has been using the Apple TV and the iOS operating system. Um, but in terms of the actual delivery of, of the application of the future, the web services will probably be key, so you'll actually connect via the internet rather than having to download applications. So the next stage um, that we're going for is uh, part of the smart fund is the development of prototype. What we're doing there, it's not a clinical trial. If, if we start moving into healthcare um, and we're looking for partners to help us to get into the healthcare sort of sector, um, 
the, the plan is to, to use the physios we used in the first round uh, of the questionnaire to actually have a, have a product. So we do, we're going to develop t um, 40 um, of the cradles um, with the connective devices for them to actually not, not trial on, uh, on patients, but to get a feel for what it's about and make recommendations. We can get the feedback then. That will then feed back. Once we've got all that information and we've, we've engaged with the physios, we'll feed that into de the development of the prototype, the DOP, which is the next stage. I think it's about a quarter of a million pounds. But that will allow us to do a, a stage one clinical trial. So again, that's the area we'd, we'd be focusing on. So, so, sorry, does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Totally. Th this is not a um, what one we're, we're agnostic against device, the device, the interactive devices. So we're not going to tie ourselves to Xbox or Playstations or, or what, um, you know, an, another type of enabler device. Um, but the idea would be is we we go out the 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 iOS uh, platform that we've developed um, with the Apple TV is quite restrictive, but it would allow people to develop their own applications, upload them to the App Store, and then they can download them and they can play them on their phones. So again, that's an area. The, the, the bigger area for us is um, we're looking at a Google, Google Android plugin which fits into the back of your television. So it's literally a little dongle that you plug in. We could write Google applications against that. Now the idea for us is we will provide the platform. It will be the developers that would go and develop the applications. We might develop our own applications or some of them. But what we would like to, it's almost survival of the fittest. You know, we, would, we would give software development kits to developers to develop against they would then find you know, applications that, that meet a need. Um, so, so what are the three um, keyboards, mice, touchscreen, and control things? That you have, so, so it's hard for me to say, you know, obviously Google would do the same with Skype. Could you not create your own profile? Because if that's a more profile that has all these things in it, could they be able to use it? Um, yeah, I'm sure we c yeah, I'm sure we could. And if, if you've got any knowledge about that um, or, or know where we could find that information, I'd be interested in having a, a chat about it. We want to make it as easy to access as possible. So, so yep. Not, not yet, no. All, we, all we've proved is that we can take the ones and zeros from the accelerometer and the gyroscope to actually show that we can capture that data. So again, um, Part of the, the, the proof of concept, uh, the next round will be able to say, okay, how can we actually create reports? Sorry, were you? No. Oh, sorry. Um, so how are we going to be able to create reports, analyze that? Um, my, my background's actually in sort of enterprise-based systems. So again, you know, are we going to start looking at a Oracle database to put it in? Are we going to look at SQL Server, MySQL, Hadoop, wh whatever it might be? But at the moment, it's, it's, it's still in the sort of infancy of, yes, we've proved it works. But then how do we give that data and access to people who want to look at it, study it, um, you know, get, get the feedback loop going? Um, I, I don't think it's, it's massive. In, in, in terms of the, the applications that we've developed with the, with the gyroscope and um, device, the little dongle, um, we haven't seen a massive amount of data, but it's a very simplistic you know, game, we're not, we're not doing, or, or application, we're not doing anything um, major there. We can see that over time, maybe, the, 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 you know, the thing that we could, we could look at is the, you know, you don't just do one exercise to improve your back, you might have 10 exercises and it might take you through a routine, a bit like a, you know, a fitness test, and, and until you've passed a certain fitness level, you'll move on to the next one. I think as the applications get more complex, that's when, when bigger data volumes will start coming through. So again, there may be things we need to look at there. Thanks, All right. Yeah. Can we have a round of applause? And Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Only
Okay, yeah. that should be good. And if you don't mind holding the microphone as well. Yeah, uh, okay. Bruce Simon here, who's very kindly offered to uh, tell us about Genius um, while you guys get yourself seen. Um, so uh, I think uh, without any further ado, I'll pass straight over to Simon. Thanks, sure. Simon. 